Hello, hello, my name is Gemma. Welcome back to another video. And we are rapidly approaching the announcement of the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And so I'm going to try and predict the 16 books that may or may not be on that list. So the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction will be announced on the 5th of March. Then the short list of six books will be announced on the 24th of April. And the winner will be announced on the 13th of April. June. So you may have already seen, but I have predicted the 16 books that I think may be um, nominated for the non-fiction portion of the prize, uh, but the fiction part has been going for a lot longer. It is celebrating books that were published between the 1st of April 2023 and the 31st of March 2024 that were written in English by a woman, and I have 16 books. Well, Actually, I started with like 50. <laughs> I had a long, long list of 50 books and I couldn't decide which ones to choose. So I actually just used a random number generator uh, to choose the 16 books because I figured that's as likely to be right as me choosing the 16. So let's talk about them. So up first, we have a book that I've actually just started reading. In the, in the large part, I haven't read any of these. I think there's only one on my list that I've actually read and this one that I'm currently reading. And that is The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan. And this is a historical fiction novel told over two timelines set in uh, Japanese occupied Malaysia in the 40s. And we see the story through multiple perspectives from the same family. So the main, main character, Cecily, we sort of see into her past as she gets embroiled uh, and brought in to be almost a spy for the Japanese. And then we see the repercussions of those actions in her future through the eyes of her children. And um, it is, so far, I'm about five chapters in, pretty brutal. Uh, the description of Japanese occupied Malaysia is, as you would imagine, uh, as you would imagine uh, and I'm also finding the understanding of the history really really interesting the fact that you've got the Brits on one side you've got the Japanese on the other side and really it's the Malaysian people that just continually suffer through this um, and I think that's the point that Chan is trying to make in this novel and so far it's very very good so I hope that one makes it and if it doesn't I still hope you pick it up because it's good. Then I've only just realised that this one is very similar actually <laughs> to the storm we made and that is The Great Reclamation by Rachel Heng. On reflection I'm not sure both of these books <laughs> would make the list but this one is looking at um, again Japanese um, occupied Malaysia and this one is set in a little fi fishing village just outside of Singapore and we see what happens as British rule wanes and Japanese occupation sort of takes over. And we see that through the eyes of a young boy and um, a female friend that he makes when he is young. And basically what happens to their relationship and their country as they both grow into adolescence. So it's very much a coming of age story with this backdrop of um, Japan versus colonial British rule in Singapore so yeah it does sound quite similar to the first one so yeah we'll see we'll see if they both make it then we have Wrong Way by Joanne McNeil which sounds super interesting it's an examination of um, labour versus AI and we follow a woman who takes a job at a company that sells self-driving cars but perhaps they're over promising a little bit on what is actually being delivered and she's sort of like a backup driver for these um self-driving cars and i think it's a little bit um thrillery in places but it sounds like a really interesting thing to be examining particularly obviously in the current age where ai is ramping up at a rapid rate then we have Sunburn by Chloe Michelle Howarth and this is set in the 90s in rural Ireland and is a Suffolk love story, coming of age story about a young girl who falls in love but then she has the challenges of sort of like traditional Irish etiquette sort of butting up against her, um, her emotions and the obviously the person that she's in love with. Uh, so I have heard good things about this. This was also nominated for the... Nero Prize in November and yeah 
it'd be interesting to see that on the list obviously Irish authors are getting quite a lot of hype um or they did in prizes last year so uh we'll see if that one also makes the list then we have Fame by Anne-Marie MacDonald which is also getting a lot of love on booktube and this is a sort of ode to the Brontes uh set in a small town which sort of borders both Scotland and England and um, we follow a young girl whose father is quite forward thinking and allows her to get um more of a traditional education more of a more of what we would have been seen as a, a male education by hiring in a tutor and we sort of see what that does to her life i think it's supposed to be quite fast moving towards the end but it is a chunker of a book i think it's over 500 pages so yeah then we have an author that i'm very excited has brought out a new book very very recently and that's kylie reed with come and get it uh i adored her first book um such a fun age which was also nominated for the women's prize did it win i can't remember but i really loved it uh and this one sounds quite different it's following a student it's a, it's a campus novel where sort of money indiscretions bad behavior um sort of push her into this situation where she has to take on a rather unconventional position with a with a um visiting professor uh, so the blurb doesn't give too much away but it's Kylie Reed so I hope she makes the list and I want to read that book I already have it on hold at the library and then we have Absolution by Alice McDermott I have had my eye on this since it was released uh, this is set in Saigon in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and we follow two women who are wives of American soldiers but living in Saigon and they're tr sort of trying to improve the situation in Saigon and it's a little bit of you know did did what they do actually help anything uh, and i think we get that from two perspectives so the sort of in saigon timeline and then them in the in the future and sort of their children reflecting on the actions that they did so really really interested in that one then another author who has been long listed on the women's prize quite recently and that's uh Catherine Chidgey and she has a new book out called Pet which actually looks a bit like an academic thriller where we have a split timeline with a student who forms a somewhat unnatural uh obsession with their teacher and wants to become like the teacher's pet I think that's where the name comes from and it looks at misogyny and racism within sort of the structure of that so yeah that sounds great and I still haven't got to her other book Remote Sympathy that was <laughs> long listed not last year the year before so yeah if she gets long listed this year i'm going to prioritize Catherine Chigi. then we have the east indian by brinda chari and this is a debut novel uh and i know the women's prize loves a debut as do i and this looks at the sort of fictionalized account of a real person the first um subcontinental indian to go to the us uh, and we see this character as he travels to London but is then kidnapped and effectively sold into slavery onto a tobacco plantation uh, and his sort of experience through all of that so really really interested to read that that sounds really really like Gemma Catnip and then we have another book that's receiving lots of hype I feel like I've got a lot of hyped books on this list and that could work for or against me depending on what the judges think uh, and that's Penance by Eliza Clark and this is I believe really examining the sort of true crime culture that we have at the moment and we follow a journalist who is sort of investigating a murder from 10 years ago a particularly brutal murder of a teenager uh, through the people that live in the town where it happened uh, so I think lots of unreliable narrators uh, and lots of insensitivity around what actually happened so yeah i'm hearing good things again about that one so let's see if that makes the list okay now we have a, a bit more of a bizarre one we have um ghost girl banana by wiz wharton and this is about a well this is split timeline a girl it moves to london or is sort of forced by her family to move to london to work from hong kong and then we follow that woman's daughter after her death as she tries to sort of uncover her mother's past in Hong Kong. So, yes, I feel like I've got a lot of books sort of relating to Southeast Asia uh, or, or, or South Asia. 
I'm obviously on a Southeast and South Asia kick. Then, I guess this one may be a little bit too close to Penance by Eliza Clark as well. Mm. It's alright, Ruth. You just um, have a look, mate. Just sit down. No, leave. Leave it. This one may be a little bit close to the Eliza Clark one as well because we're looking at true crime again. This is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. And this book is inspired by the true events of the all-American sex killer. And we follow two different perspectives. One of a girl who is on campus and narrowly misses getting murdered um, while all her friends do at a party. And another perspective as the killer sort of moves uh, away from that campus. So, yeah, I'm hearing very good things about it. I love the cover. Let's see if it makes the long list. Then we have the one book that I have read and that is Julia by Sandra Newman. I have raved about this quite a lot. I do have a solo review, I'll link it below. And um, this is a feminist retelling of 1984 from the perspective of Julia, who is the love interest in the original. Uh, and I just, and I just loved what Newman did with this, the way that she expanded the world, the way she made it darker in a lot of ways, uh, and the way that she really looked at the way she thought Big Brother and this dictatorship would affect women. Uh, so yes, highly recommend, really hoping to see it on the long list. Then we have Piglet by Lottie Hazel and this sounds fabulous. It's about a, well, Hazel is examining ambition and hunger in women and is it possible to have it all and what does that look like? And we follow a woman who is about to get married to the love of her life when she finds out that he has been cheating. Uh, she decides to go ahead with the marriage, but what effect is that going to have on her? Um, and yeah, it sounds gritty and very true to life. So let's give that a whirl. Then we have The Long Form by Kate Briggs, which was recently nominated for the Republic of Consciousness uh, Prize. It's been long listed for that. And this is sort of an examination of novel form and sort of creativity and form in human life um, through a woman and her baby and sort of I think we spend the whole time with them in their apartment and it's like a reflection on how life mimics art. I don't know it may be a tad literary for me um, but mother-child relationships always always sound interesting so uh, I would definitely like to give that one a go and we may see it on the list though it may be more of a book a book than a women's prize book and finally we have I am homeless if this is not my home by Laurie Moore and this is a ghost story set in the 19th and 20th century we follow a huge eclectic cast of characters as they sort of explore what is love and death what is passion what is grief uh, and through stories that are told over generations but how much truth do they really have in them so that is my list of 16 i'd love to know if you've read any of these if you've heard of any of these if you want to read any of these um and and give me a guess how many you think i'm going to get right out of 16 i don't think i got any last year so i'm hoping for one if you missed my review of julia by sandra newman i will leave that here and i will catch you all very soon with another one bye guys